Good morning, m 90 years. Thank you for checking back in this morning. We are moving into a brand new topic, looking at the mercy of God, God's great mercies. So we're moving away from the book of 1 Thessalonians. We've done a lot of memorizing there. Now we're moving into the book of Timothy. Timothy was written by Paul, and he wrote not to a church as he did in the book of Thessalonians, but he's writing here in Timothy to his protege, his son in the gospel. So Paul is writing this letter to Timothy. And for this particular topic, we're going to be looking at, at the great mercies of God. What, what are mercies or, or what is God's mercy? Well, mercy can be simply defined as um, an act of, of forgiveness or an act of kindness shown towards somebody even though they did a wrong or they made a mistake toward you. So it's, it's forbearance, it's forgiving, it's showing kindness to somebody else. So that's what we're going to be looking at here for this next little while is the mercy of God. And as you memorize these scriptures about mercy, you'll get a better idea that God is a God of great, great mercies. Uh, we see all throughout the Bible how that's who God is, but let me share just two scriptures with you that really bring that out about how merciful God is. From the book of Lamentations, Jeremiah writes, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Think about your life. Hasn't that been true for you? When you've messed up, made mistakes, you could have been consumed, but it was the mercies of God and it was his compassions that never fail that are why we are where we are. And he goes on to say, speaking of the mercies of God, that they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So each morning as you arise and get your next scripture on mercy, God has fresh mercies for you. Mercy. That's what we're going to be talking about for the next few days. But why do we even need mercy? Like, what's so great about mercy? Why do we even need it? Well, Let's go back to the very beginning. You see, Adam and Eve were in a perfect, perfect place. It, everything was perfect, they were perfect, but then sin entered. Disobedience came and sin entered into the world. And since then, every single person who has ever lived has had sin in their lives. That is, except for one. You guessed it, Jesus. And he came to bring mercy to us. He came to bring forgiveness to us. He went to the cross on Calvary to die for our sins. Not because we're perfect, but because we're not. That's the reason Jesus came, to extend mercy and to bring mercy. So what was broken in the garden can be reconnected and can be reestablished. So let's check it out in the Bible. In the New Testament, the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 3 through 8. It says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. In other words, not perfect. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. 
This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Notice verse 5 says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. In other words, we can't do anything to be good enough to receive mercy. He gives it to us. How? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. He extends that mercy to us when we're baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. He gives us mercy and he shed it abundantly through Jesus Christ. And take a look at this. This is a faithful saying, verse 8. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Affirm constantly. That means putting it before your mind, before your eyes all the time. In 90 years, what are you doing with God's word? You are repeatedly putting it in front of your eyes, putting it into your mind. You're affirming constantly because I know that you guys are going back and reviewing the scriptures that we've memorized already. And so you're constantly putting it before you, reaffirming, affirming constantly. That's what the word of God tells us to do. So for the next three days, we are talking about God's mercy extended to us sinners. We're going to be looking at his mercy and hearing about it through 1 Timothy, the book of 1 Timothy. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Here are your next three scriptures for the next three days. Are you ready? Here they are.